What up dude bros, I'm Frank. This is a video review on the Jet Blaster Sega. This is a pump action spring powered magazine fed blaster that's made by an aftermarket parts company, Jet Blaster. But this is a complete blaster, not just a kit like for internals or the Zeus 2 shell. Super cool product, let's get into the review. Included is the blaster's upper receiver, lower receiver, stock, an extra bolt sled, an extra o-ring, a plunger rubber pad, a magazine, two body pens, darts, and the instructions. I'd like to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, World of Warships Blitz. World of Warships Blitz is free to play and available on Google Play and the App Store. And I was like, pew pew pew, I sank your battleship, bro. Install World of Warships Blitz now using the link in the description below and reach level 4 and get a huge pack of prizes. Aw snap, that's like a shotgun missile launcher, OP bro. Thanks again to World of Warships Blitz for sponsoring this video. There's a download link in the description box below. So, this blaster is pretty cool because it's specifically designed for modders or the more competitive, enthusiastic nerfers who want to be able to customize their stuff. This whole blaster takes down with just the two pins. You don't need a screwdriver and you can maintain pretty much the whole thing without any tools. So if you're constantly tinkering with your blasters and you keep experimenting with variables like the o-ring seal, the, the spring or whatever, this blaster is super fast to do little tests. And I personally love the balance between tactical and practical. It's built from the ground up as a fresh blaster and I think it, it balances perfectly with streamlined, like it doesn't have anything it doesn't need but it's also tactical with this long Picatinny rail, uh, M4 compatible buffer tube. So it feels fantastic. Their ergonomics, the balance, you know, it, it's smooth to operate. It's a joy to use and it looks snazzy, which is a, a hard thing to balance. If you get too tactical, it gets into the gimmicky nonsense, which just kind of just slows you down or whatever. So I'll go over the external features of the CETA. Up front, it does not have an in-strike compatible attachment nozzle. Up top, it has a giant Picatinny rail along the entire top of the blaster for your optic or optics. You could totally put like multiple scopes up there for reasons. This whole white piece is the priming handle. It is a pump action blaster. These metal bars are the pump arms. And then they attach to the bolt sled with these little uh, screws on the outside right here. Very cool design here, by the way, because it's going on the inside and the outside and very uh, like slender design, which is cool. Prime action is very smooth. Power uh, required will completely depend on what spring you have. With the included spring, the prime is super easy. To the magazine, well, it is compatible with InStrike magazines. The included magazine is compatible with other InStrike mags, but it's made by Jet Blaster. And they did the same thing they did with the Katana mags. It's not a directional magazine. Have you ever loaded a Nerf mag backwards? It doesn't fit into the blaster the other way. This mag will work either way. Of course, you wanna load all your darts pointing one direction, of course. But it fits and locks either direction, which is cool. It's not terribly useful, but it's one of those things like, why not make it this way if there's no benefit to making it the other way? The magazine release is uh, full Lambie, bro. So it's on this side and on this side. And when you pull that, mag drops right out, super smooth. Trigger pull is as expected. This blaster does not have slam fire and uh, stock grade nerfers might say that's a disadvantage, but that's a preference amongst modders, especially with the upgraded springs and no air restrictors because you don't want to dry fire a blaster like this. And because it doesn't have slam fire, you're able to deprime the blaster to safely store without dry firing. The grip is super comfortable. It's really big. It's oversized. You know, there's nothing there that doesn't have to be there. And in my opinion, it's it's fantastic. Very smooth back area. It's huge. But if you have a little hand, you can totally choke up on it and it won't be a big deal. Behind that is a sling attachment point. If you want to hook in your sling, that's a rather large sling attachment point BT dub. So you can put in just a full size carabiner if you really wanted to. And back here is the adjustable stock. This one is included with the blaster, but it's based on an M4 buffer tube. And I tested it with an LWRC stock and that stock works just fine. The included stock is adjustable. It works a little differently because you don't pull up on the handle. You pull down on this little lock to adjust it to a different position like this. And if you want to switch it out to a different M4 style stock, you can just pull it off and slide something else onto this buffer tube. Or receiver extension. Sorry, it's not a buffer tube anymore. Right behind the trigger is a safety mechanism. It's in safe right now, so it's not able to be fired. Then you push in the switch and you're able to fire. So those are the external features of the blaster. Now to a really cool aspect, the toolless takedown. So you can take it down to replace the spring, maintain the barrel or maintenance, anything else really quickly without a screwdriver. You first unscrew this screw and the one over here, and that's disconnecting the bolt sled from your priming arm. So that's disconnected, so this can move freely, essentially. Then there are two pins that connect the whole blaster, one right here and one right here, and they have these little key ring things attached. So you pull and that's, you know, out. Each pin has a little detent ball at the end there so it can't accidentally like jimmy itself out. Although if the rattling would bother you and it kind of bothers me and I'm sure it's screwing up my audio already. This is just like a little key ring so you could totally snap that off and pull it off if you want traditional push pins. But after you have your two pins out and your bolt sled's disconnected, you can just pull like that and it disconnects the upper receiver from the lower. Back here we have the dart pusher, the bolt sled, the plunger tube, the spring and the plunger rod and you can just pull out the bolt sled and dart pusher like that. And to get to the plunger tube, you can kind of pry out on the shell just a little bit. Not much force is really required to loosen that. 
and then you can pull that out. And that's how fast it is to get to the spring if you wanna throw in a more powerful spring. So if you're like a hardcore nerfer or you play with different groups of people specifically and you don't wanna to change to something else because this is such a well-built blaster. So you wanna play with your hardcore guys, you, you throw in an upgraded spring so then you can shoot hard, you know, like 150 FPS, whatevs. But then you also wanna play with some stock grade friends and you know, it's not really fun to completely destroy everyone. Okay, it is, but not if they're your friends. <laughs> so then you can just quickly get to the spring, throw in a, a weaker spring so then you don't have to use a different blaster, all without a screwdriver or any tools. Although if you have to upgrade the catch spring or the catch, or if you happen to break your catch or whatever, that is built into the blaster a little bit further. And that's beyond the, the basic takedown of the blaster. Reinstallation is pretty simple. You can just slide it back in like that. The bolt sled needs to be aligned in these little shell grooves. It's covered in lube. Gross. <laughs> if you need to get to the barrel, it's also toolless, so you can pull up and then push, and that pulls out the dart chamber as well as the barrel. And when you're ready to reassemble, you align these little tabs and slide them together. I've only done this a couple times, but every time I do it, I get a little bit better. I'm sure you can do it more gracefully than I just did. Then you can put back in your pins and then put these screws back in, and that has to be aligned with the bolt sled, of course. And you're ready to pew pew. It's, it's super fast and easy. And also toolless, and it doesn't require like 25 different screws, so you don't bring in your screwdriver out on the field if you need to switch out your spring or do anything. And beyond like game day advantages, just doing mods and stuff at home, it's faster to get into everything. You don't have to keep unscrewing everything. So the breech system that's included with the CETA is an Omni RT breech, which means it's compatible with both full-size darts and Stefan darts, which is super cool. Bringing back to that hardcore modding thing, if you wanna use Stefan darts and shoot high velocity, shoot your friends with other hot, um, modified blasters, you can do that and then you switch out the spring, but you don't have to switch out breaching systems. You don't have to do anything crazy. Then you can go back to shooting, you know, long darts or, you know, like Nerf Elite darts. The included darts are stamped with Jet Blaster um, and these are like full-size nipple style darts. Nipple because of the, the dart tip, like a nipple. I didn't make that name up. That's just what they're called, nipple. Which works with the full-size magazine that's included, but it's also uh, compatible with the Katana system also made by Jet Blaster. The Katana mag system is an adapter that's, you know, the same size as a standard mag, and that goes into a standard magazine well like that. And then you get the Katana mags, which are thin, small, and easy to pack a bunch of these on your body. So that fits right into that adapter plate. So then when you want to reload, you don't strike your, your normal magazine release, you pull the Katana mag release right there. The normal mag release will slide out the adapter. And this breech without any modifications works with full-size darts and shortened Stefan darts. You can use either or something in between, I suppose. So enough chatting. Here's the firing demo of the CETA with the included spring in the included Omni breech. It's worth noting my firing demo did not go as planned. I live in Naples, Florida or Southwest Florida. It's hot and more importantly, it's super humid here. My house was built in like the 80s with single pane glass. So the outside gets in even with an air conditioner. My humidity level changes from about 45 to maybe 53%, which is extremely humid. And it unfortunately makes some darts swell up depending on the foam composition. So when your darts swell up, it's kind of clogged and it doesn't shoot well and it causes jams and uh, you know inconsistent velocities. So not ideal testing conditions for a modified blaster like this or you know a, a compression barrel like this. Just need to say that, so here's the firing demo. Included jet blaster nipple darts in their included bag. So that is the firing of the CETA. The overall performance, the feel of the blaster and how smoothly it operates is fantastic. The firing performance on the other hand is a little inconsistent. Like I mentioned, it's most likely due because of my location. More specifically, the humidity level in this particular home, newer homes that seal off from the atmosphere a little bit better can maintain whatever humidity level they set on the inside. I can't turn over air that quickly. Uh, the humidity seeps in through all my windows. Lay bummer. So I've experienced some feeding issues. It works well with thinner darts, but more stiff, rigid foam just kind of clogs the barrel so then the air escapes out of the breech instead of, you know, forcing the, the dart through the barrel. All of that said, with the included uh, breech and the included spring, I got an average velocity on my chronograph of about 94 feet per second shooting Nerf Elite darts. But please, if you buy this blaster, do not use Nerf Elite darts. Nerf Elite darts suck. That's just for velocity uh, comparison. This is so designed for competitive nerfers who are trying to, you know, hit sniper status with their pump action super fast rate of fire. Nerf Elite darts are pretty terrible. I had pretty good experience with the included uh, nipple style darts, and that's because the, the heads here are pretty small and allow a little bit of compression 
compression through this tight barrel. Waffle style darts did not work well in my experience, but waffle head is overall like a little bit wider and it doesn't compress inside the barrel. So it causes a clog or at the very least more friction on the barrel for inconsistent firing velocity. So if you're looking for ammo, I'd look for something with a smaller, thinner head like the worker Steffens or the included nipple darts. There are a lot of other aftermarket nipple style darts. <laughs> nipple, I can't, how, that's such a funny word, nipple. So overall opinion on the Jet Blaster CETA. Overall, I really like the blaster. It's a functional, very efficient package that's ergonomic, comfortable. You know, pump action springers are awesome. This one's built very well. Bonus points that the two pins make it super fast to take down if you wanna constantly maintenance your blaster or, you know, clean out your O-rings if you're playing in a filthy, like, outdoor environment. For outdoor Stefan Wars, that's a concern. You wanna be able to clean that stuff out to maintain your air seal. It balances tactical and practical and also in a color scheme that's not like, hey, guys, this is a firearm. So if you're using it in an outdoor Nerf battle, it doesn't look like a gun, but it's still tactical. Giant Picatinny rail, M4 buffer tube for a different stock if you don't like this one. I don't have any issues with this one, but you know, if you want to customize it, you can. The pump action system cycles really smoothly. It's comfortable. I, I like the blaster. It's really great to be able to get to the spring quickly if you want to play with a different group of people um, playing under a different rule set. And it's also compatible with shortened darts and full size darts, which is cool for the same reason. Seems like a great blaster for those who are like, hey, I want to have like a HVZ blaster and also a normal, um, you know, humans versus human blaster, but I don't want to put all this money into two different blasters, now this platform can fulfill both roles. Assuming you're not doing them at the exact same time and you want to like dual wield, then you might need two blasters. <laughs> this one is obviously blue. They also have a red version um, and all of the blue parts just turn red. It's still uh, based on the same creamy white. A few maybe cons or things to point out. Um, if you're unfamiliar with um, upgraded spring blasters like this that run with a real compression barrel, uh, your dart fit is very important. Something I remember back in the day when I played more Stefan Wars, um, I would do dart fitting inside my home. Then when I went outside, my dart fit went to because I'm outside. Even in Ohio in the summer, with the heat and humidity, the darts swell because they're foam. When I say swell, they get slightly larger in diameter. They get a little thicker because of the humidity in the air. And that changes your dart fit, which in that case, you know, could jam up a blaster. This one just doesn't fire if you're using super fat darts. Or at the very least, inconsistent firing velocity, which affects your accuracy because you don't know exactly like what level you need to shoot. That's because some darts swell, you know, a little bit differently than others. If you're familiar with this issue, it's not a big deal. It's the same as every other Springer. But if you're used to like Nerf blasters, which just have a moving barrel, and they don't use a real compression barrel, uh, it's definitely worth pointing out. Also, when you're clearing jams, this doesn't have a huge access door. It has more of like an access slot. And with the design of the dart chamber right here, I found it pretty difficult to get my finger in there to clear out a jam. I actually had a screwdriver on hand just so I could get to the dart and like pry it out. When I tried to use an overly fat dart and it wouldn't fire, it just seized up. So that's kind of an issue, something definitely to keep your eye on. Also, the pump action grip doesn't have any ridge in the rear here with the included weak spring or, you know, the 94 FPS. Yeah, that's, I guess, weak for modern. It works just fine, but I can see if I pumped up to a stronger spring, I would want something here so I could have like a backstop on my hand. The included breech works with both Stefan and full-size darts, and this is the Omni RT breech. They also have the Alpha and the Omega RT breeches coming soon. I don't know when. And both of those breeches are going to have a better air seal between the dart chamber and the dart pusher, so it might fix the consistency issues that I'm complaining about. But again, those consistency issues are mostly because of my incredible humidity. Also, I heard somewhere they might offer different upper receivers, one with a different grip, like a, a foregrip, or one with a rail so you could attach a foregrip if you wanted to, which would fix the uh, like grip issue that I just addressed. But that's down the road and I believe that'll be an add-on option. This is uh, sold as one package with just this breach with everything shown. So overall opinion on the CETA is very high. I think it's going to be very well received by the modding community. The Zeus 2 long shot shell I already reviewed on my channel was super cool, but that was just a shell. This is a, an entirely contained blaster. So you buy it and you can pull it out of the box and start pew pewing. And if you want to upgrade down the road, you can also do that, but it's not just a shell kit. So very cool blaster. Awesome balance between practical and tactical, ergonomic, mechanically sound. You know, it's a very efficient battle blaster. Guided towards the more competitive, enthusiastic nerfers in mostly modders. So I'm curious, what do you guys think of the Jet Blaster CETA? Leave a comment in the section below. Are any of you Flywheel Master Race members going to convert over to the Springer class? It's pretty cool. I don't know that it's that cool. I, I dig flywheels. I don't know that I can change, but it's still pretty awesome. That concludes my video review of the CETA. If you'd like to purchase one, I'll leave a buy link in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical.